Xian. I don't think it's going to work as well as it did before. With thousands in attendance, bigger troopers, Sonics, and all. Welcome to game number one. This here is Bigatron Alpha versus Onik. And we see Super Ken starting on the purple, and it's likewise for Kyrie. Let's see here, Super Ken on this Alice. Let's talk a little bit about this, because we have seen it before in Season 11. Super Ken, when he joined the MPL, one of the pocket picks that we were able to see from him was not just the Alice, but the Hanzo as well. He was utilizing these crazy picks, and he was making it work. Thing is, in Season 11, every single time he tried to utilize this exact strat up against Onik, they always crumbled. Maybe this time, maybe this time, a minute in, and you see these two roamers, Keyboy and Supervin, just playing footsies, dealing damage to each other, amounting to not much, as Supergang continues to farm real quick. Hey, uh, check on our emblems, and uh, again, the sustainability coming in from oh. BTR. Ah, oh, Kyrie underneath! Shadow kill coming down, first blood for Kyrie. One minute in, Onik already pushing the, fa the pace, utilizing the Hayabusa. This is what they want to do, but Super Ken on the other side, getting Keyboy low, trying to invade in the jungle. Interesting, in mid, Onik is looking to up their tempo, looking at the snowball, but down bottom, it looks like Super Ken has a plan of his own, stealing away a small camp from Kyrie. 20 seconds up until this turtle comes up. Let's talk about the XP lane matchup though. What is like between a Uranus and a Fredrin? more like a non-lane. Cerezo's not really gonna look for these trades. He understands that, you know, the Uranus is just gonna constantly clear the waves. And even if he does try to force it, it's not really much he can do. I don't think he can get boots lower, even threaten a kill. Kyrie, yep. no purple buff this time, but Super Ken as well. I think Super Ken might be a bit more reliant on that purple buff than Kyrie on the Haya. At this point, yeah. Uh, especially as we ramp up into the uh, mid game, but now first turtle up already. T-Boy spots two. Oh, Super Ken not gonna be able to contest. Kyrie scores. Retribution, Onik for the first kill and the first neutral objective. Bigatron Alpha have been placed into a spot where they will have to try to weather the storm. And I think that might just be the case for Bigatron Alpha. They understand how much early to mid game power Onyx composition has, especially their trio mid. They're gonna be able to rotate more efficiently and overall they're gonna have a better time. So Bigatron Alpha are just banking on that later stage. Mid to late is when they can strike. Which is counterintuitive to how these two teams have been playing so far, but Wave Super gets spots one. Not enough damage quite yet. He has the back, RWM. Oh, they're going to go in. Divide Judgment bringing it back. Super Ken getting the healing right now. He's going to be able to sustain Keyboy. Caught in the sustain. Super Ken equalizes for the Terminators. All thanks to that common emblem and as well the, um, the build he's used. Uh, you can see here that he actually has the do on him and he was unpunished. Onyx seems to have miscalculated the amount of damage and aggression they can put on a single hero in that mid lane engagement. So with that, I'd say even if Onyx does have a 700 gold lead, even if they do have Turtle, this early game isn't as quite a big dub for them. Bigatron Alpha, I'm loving it. If they want to make it to the late game, this is definitely the way you want to go. Oh, big mistake by Stockin there. Jumping with the BMI, but now Kyrie. Oh, watch Stockin with a juke now. Blazing duet. I still think he's going to die here with a shadow kill placed onto him. A good juke delaying the inevitable, but it still happens. It took him a second or two longer to go down, but Onik still got their prey. And now a thousand gold ahead. Let's see how much more pressure they can apply on the map, how much more they can deny Bigatron Alpha, the late game scaling that they so badly need. More now at the four minute mark than ever in this game one. Bigatron Alpha are crossing the river and they're looking to posture up for this turtle, but it's not gonna be for free down bottom. They're looking for a dive here. Oh, good escape. Oh, oh, oh. Away from the real world manipulation. But Keyboy still wants to dive right now. Saken waiting on the BMI. Perfectly timed now. Jumps back. Weak side. But Saken says it's all good. Three man gank. This should give over. Super Ken, a free turtle up top. Oh, Vin's very low. Boots wants something. Put in some stacks on. He needs one more. There's the heal. The bloom coming in clutch for Super Vin. Getting him back to a an HP bar that is not there. That can be risked. Boots not able to kill him. A mastery mechanics, not just in that engagement up top, but even down bottom for Bigatron Alpha. Saken using to its maximum potential the damage reduction underneath that gold shield on his turret. 25%, folks, that's huge, especially when you're looking at what? Quarter built items on early game heroes. Now Keyboy gets spotted. 
for Divine Judgment and the Shadow Kill used up onto Super Finn. Now it's Ken and Moreno forced back out of their own jungle. And Kyrie, despite it only being a 2,000 gold lead, he is up two levels earlier. Now Super Ken finally getting back in. Stock and forced back. Kyrie. Oh, the Shuriken's here. Stock and pops into Blazing Duet. Has that Brave Smite. Keeps him alive. Just barely though, and here you see Onik are limit testing. They're seeing how much he can get away with and how much pressure they can put on to Sakin. And here up top we see again the non-battle, the non-lane between these two just hunks of meat, Sorizo and Boots. Down bottom, the first turret goes down, Onik scoring, again shrinking the space that Sakin can take farm from. And this is going to be a very, very good position that Ani can utilize to further capitalize, to further take their lead in towards the mid-game. Neutral objective control will still be on their side with Saken falling so far behind. Taking a look at the gold lead, yeah, almost 1,000 between the gold laners. And for CW, remember, a 1,000 gold lead normally would already be big. On a 1-1, one -one, it's even bigger because mm -hmm. CW has not built any defensive items, hasn't built boots at all. It is full damage. And he's greeting out. And he has all the right in the world to do so. Uh -huh. You're looking at Saken who only has, again, Warrior Boots and Demon Hunter Sword. Against one one, not gonna lead to much. Here we see last turtle of the game up. Keyboard with a conceal. Retribution battle. It's gonna be Super Kenna wins it right now. Zorizo taunts them up in the back. Boots also doing the same thing. Saken with the Blazing Duet, unable to kill anyone down. Boots is acting as a distraction. CW looking for all the weakness points, but Zorizo flickers out the safety. CW pops in the Inspire, but gets chunked down. And Bigatron Alpha, they go back. Appraiser Trap coming down on Boots, but again, it's only onto Boots. CW Airlines fails to take off. One way trip, the game one victory delayed. And with that, it's another gauge of how much Onik can put on a Bigatron Alpha until Bigatron Alpha is ready. And this is what Onik should be doing. This is their key to victory. Because if we go past the 12, 15 minute mark, and Bigatron Alpha haven't been buried underneath the ground, buried in value, buried in economy, then it's over. Bigatron Alpha will take over the game. Looking at the item build so far, Super Ken is looking great, man. He's on his way to a dominant size, COD. He's almost unkillable at this point. Mm hmm and Once he gets unkillable, that's when Onik will really struggle. Even with their pickoff comp, remember, the Bloom will deny, will take every single anti-region effect that Onik has away from them. Right now, we're already seeing two Dominance Ices built up, but remember, the Bloom takes it all away. And with that, Bigatron Alpha are moving around. It's like the tier one down bottom hasn't even been taken. Tier one up top two. They sent CW to once more shrink the real estate that BTR can play with. Onyx, 3,000 gold heads. CW and Kyrie up on top of the leaderboards with Sakin just marching up forward. It's not as slow a slow farm. He only has really died once. So that's not good, but it's okay. Especially now looking at eight minutes, 30 seconds in. He's on his way to his next core item. So Rizzo just built himself a Radiant Armor. Against EW, not gonna do much, but at least against Sans, against Kibo, against Boots specifically, he's okay. So at least they have that one lane that they can just mm, hunker down. Oh, Flicker Divine Judgment, bringing Super Finn back, and that should be Yama yeah, Crossbow. A time with the Inspire used up. Super Finn falls, now on the Super Can, who's still on the Rumble Bomb. He's doing well on the back line with Sakin in the real world of inflation. Not enough though, it's still Onik. There we go, the bomb from Sorizo, a little too late. Now it's Boots just holding his ground, making sure no stragglers push on forward. Sans ain't done. Looking at the damage output, it's clear that Sans and Kyrie, and even CW, even if his uh, crossbow tang just came up and then flew, kicked to the skies just for a second or two longer, there's great damage coverage. And with that, Onik just convert like a, a snap. Absolutely beautiful from Onik, understanding their limits. You mentioned earlier they were testing it, now they understand their limits. They're utilizing it now to completely punish Vigatron Alpha, capitalizing in this moment as Moreno. Let's take a look at his item as well as Sokken. Sokken finally building up the Golden Staff. That is a power spike, but it's not going to be a big one. Look at CW already on the way to that win of nature, trying to neutralize the BTR power spike. And Kyrie just picked up the Heptases. So if prior the engagements came up short, all the more now. I wouldn't be surprised if he picked up a C Halberd. Now Boots in trouble. So gets out. It's that Onyx buff, man. They're just unkillable. 
and they're utilizing it here in this game to pick turrets off the board. Boots is acting as a distraction as CW acts as the assassin. And as soon as he takes the disguise, which with the help of that wind of nature, again, it's going to keep him immune for just a little more to prop those weakness finders. Uh, and, of course, his weakness marks. It'll be all the more trouble for Bigatron Alpha. Onik pushing their lead, coming in through mid. Top lane's going to crash on down as well. Ten minutes and a half in. This is a very, very massive 7k gold lead. And finally, they take care of the Lord. Oh, Kyrie jumping in, looking for the shadow kill, but he will just hold on to it. Lord cleared up up top by Saken and Super Ken. As we can turn Alpha, are still able to defend. But Onik, remember the gold lead, it's still building up. It is quite big now with a 2.72k Lord advantage at their hands. It basically forced a Patron Alpha in their base. Now they're forced to just turtle and farm in their base. My oh God, look at birthday boy. Look at Sans here. In some parts of the world, you could argue it's still his birthday. Yeah. So the buff is still active, and he is playing this Valentina to a T. The burst is there, the acquisition of ults on point two, and that's what bought here Onik this huge lead. Approaching this Lord, 45 seconds in, where else can Bigatron Alpha find value? You said that they're going to turtle up. You said that they're going to try to stay in. When Onyx starts to freeze, there are no stacks for Super Gen to get. Not at all. And that's why it's just so brilliant from Onyx. They understand that if you want to go for a composition like this that tries to weather out the storm, if the storm is um, too massive, it if it was just literally a natural disaster that just takes you out, mm -hmm. it's not much you can do against it. A force of nature, an act of God. And that is but what Onik is bringing. So he's just spotted. Of course, Onik not gonna oblige. Oh, RWM! Leo CW is still able to fly right now. Gets out, he's fire popped in. Super Ken caught in the bad situation. The Bloom is able to help him out, but not for long. As Kyrie disintegrates oh. the back line. Now the Shadow Kill been able to flick her out, but Super Ken's down. Cerezo surviving, barely. Onik happy with what they got. A pick off on a key hero, Super Ken could not do anything with the suppress laid on him by Keyboy. And now Onyx are going to convert straight into this luminous Lord. They brought Enhanced 12 minutes in. And now with the Starlium Scythe. Wow, Sans Starlium Scythe. You can see the confidence here from Sans. He's been recalling non-stop. And Keyboy's following through as well. It's the Sans and Keyboy recall special. It's a deadly duo. They not only wreck you and ruin you in game, but also your mental. You can only imagine what Bigatron Alpha is going through right now. They can't even leave their base, and they have to plan for the defense of a lifetime. Luckily, they have great high ground defense, but how far can that take you? Lord, crash it in the mid. That's the base turret taken down. Bottom lane also coming down as CW is able to do quick work. Or Whoa, I agree with the shadow kill. Only on to the minions right now. Super Ken's gonna be able to jump in into the back. Boom. But Saken gets bursted down. Now the crossbow on Tay and he's fired. He's gonna crunch in his boss. Placed in time, but he will fall. 13 minutes in. And Onik will wipe BTR down to their last member. The Terminators have done well to go by their word and knock out all of the Filipino teams. But here, it looks like Raja Langit still reigns supreme. Game one goes to Onik.